Okay, so uh, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the fourth webinar of the uh, Brazilian Biophysical Society. So this is a series of seminars that uh, our society has organized to uh, keep us engaged during this time of pandemic, okay? So, so that we can keep talking uh, good science and exchanging ideas with uh, leading scientists in the world. So uh, thanks everybody for joining us, for making the time to be with us today. Our session will, uh, uh, well, we will have a uh, talk delivered today by uh, Professor Luis Bagatoli. And uh, everybody's welcome to ask questions using the Q&A tab or the chat in our uh, Zoom, Zoom tool. Or in the end, we, we will allow the, uh, you know, everyone to turn their mics on and you can either ask your questions live or you can write down your questions and I will read it for uh, our uh, invited speaker of today. Okay, so as I said, we have the great pleasure to have with us today, uh, a very uh, a nice, very fine scientist, Professor Luis Bagatoli, uh, who is a uh, professor now in the uh, Univers in Universidad Nacional de Córdoba, Instituto de Investigación Médica, Mercedes e Maria Ferreira. Oh, I was trying to do some accent here. Let's see how, how, was, <laughs> how was it, right? Uh, Bagatoli was a, a PhD student in chemistry in, in Argentina. And after his PhD, he was a postdoc in the, in the US, in Illinois, where he uh, worked with uh, mainly with fluorescence methods. After that, he spent a long time in Denmark, University of Southern, De South Southern Denmark, in the uh, biomembrane group there, where he became one of the most distinguished scientists in the field of membrane biophysics, okay? After 15 years, I guess, so Bagatoli was uh, was back to Argentina, right, Bagatoli? And uh, since 2017, he's back in Cordoba, uh, settling down his group and bringing all his experience and knowledge to South, back to South America. So I'm uh, really glad that you accept our invitation to be with us today. And we are really looking forward to hear to your talk, Bagatoli, today. Thank you very much. Floor is all yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, Antonio. I would like just to, to thank the Brazilian Biophysical Society for the invitation and, and of course, the, the attention of all these people that are today here in this talk. <clears throat> um, well, the title of my talk uh, is uh, uh, connected to a kind of a new line of research that we started more or less around five years ago. And um, uh, what I would try to show you is a little bit controversial. Um, and I really hope that you will enjoy a uh, bottom line here. Um, heads need to be open. And of course, I will be glad at, at the end of the talk just to discuss uh, and respond to all the questions you have. All right. So um, um, the outline of my talk will consist in essentially three parts. The first one is the um, is, is is needed because uh, what I will discuss is an alternative cellular model, right? It's not the only model that they taught uh, in 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 the university or or careers, right? And this is called the association induction hypothesis. Then as a second part, I will just uh, talk about my model system. It's a, a model system we choose in these last five years to uh, essentially uh, uh, test the tenets of this uh, hypothesis of this theory, right? And um, uh, as, 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 as point number three, I will just show you uh, the models we, we build on, on this, you know, uh, theory. And I will just try to make some sort of reflections and show you some results concerning cellular membranes. And finally, I will just try to do conclusions. Well, it, I will start this discussion with a couple of statements. The first one uh, is connected to what uh, I said before, that uh, when you go to cellular models, you only have one single vision, 
uh, and this is the only thing that you will hear in your careers and things like that. It's quite universal, this, this situation. And the, the, the other thing is that the canonical model that we use for uh, describing all, 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 all uh, cellular process are based on, on schemes <clears throat> from uh, the physical chemistry of dilute systems, right? So you are just getting all these beautiful theories for, for example, mass action kinetic theory, dilute solution theory, Van Hoff, intracellular free water as a biological solvent. This is what you will assume in the cell. You will assume that the ions are completely dissociated, right? You will assume that the, you can apply diffusion models there. Brownian motion is, is one of the key points there because you accept that inside the cell, you know, uh, you will have a prevalence of the random thermal collisions, right? Dominating the motion. Uh, the, the cell in this canonical model is also described as, as a steady state energetics or, or, or a system that responds to steady state energetics, right? So you will assume that the cell has an extremely high energy consumption. In fact, there is almost, well, in the books, you can read that 70% uh, of the ATP, which is called the fuel of the cell, will be consumed in order to keep <clears throat> this, this, this energetic is going on. And of course, their prevalence of dissipation of energy. This is all the assumptions that are coming from this dilution theory that we apply to the cell, right? In, in this canonical model, the other thing which is uh, very important to remark is that the membranes has a central role, right? We are talking about permeability through semi-permeable membranes, all right? And of course, there is another aspect which is very important uh, that uh, the, is, is the prevalence of the, what, what we call the dogma uh, structure and function, right? Uh, because generally you will uh, have a structure and trying to assign a function. This is very well well used uh, or has been developed from the yeah middle of the 20th century, where 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 you know the translation of, of DNA to proteins has been described, right? But, which is working very well in that sense. But the, the point I want to make here is that you are privileging single molecules events to describe emergent properties of the system, okay? And <clears throat> the view that we have on the, on the cells is essentially the one I show you here, where you will have liquid water, free ions, and, and basically interpret the cell as a bag contained, a bag of watery bag contained by a membrane, essentially, also for the organelles. Well, there is uh, something that you really need to take into account when, when, when you think about this, 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 all these things I mentioned before, is that th there are very quite uh, well-described characteristics that are common to all cellular systems. I'm, I'm talking precisely about molecular crowding, the spatial confinement, uh, and, and of course, uh, the, the impact on, on, on these two factors on the physical state of the intracellular environment, right? What I'm essentially referring here is that uh, in, in the intracellular environment, you have a really high concentration of macromoles mo 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 uh, mo sorry, macromolecules, mostly proteins. Uh, the concentration of this scale up to 200 to 350 milligrams per milliliter, which is basically impossible to reproduce in a test tube in vitro, right? And when you uh, consider this sort of scenario, so you start to think in the impact of this physical state in the uh, major component of the cell, in number and in mass, which is water, right? If you have an impact on the behavior of water or in the physical state of water by this crowding that you have inside this, this cell, obviously you will impact largely the colligative properties of the system. Right? This is basic physical chemistry. We, we are taught actually that all the colligative properties are, are linear with the concentration when you, you have dilute system. But as soon as you start to increase the concentration of salt or whatever, then you start to have a deviations from the behavior of these colligative properties, right? And, and, and obviously uh, we know that the cells are non-equilibrium thermodynamics uh, systems, right? 
And, and the question I would try to raise here is that we can interpret these, these cells as a purely dissipative systems, right? Just to give you an idea, I just have a, this, this uh, sketch on, a, on a, a mycoplasm in this case, where you can see how crowd is the environment inside the cell. Actually, if you uh, calculate in one dimension how many molecules of water you can put right from one wall of protein to another, a neighbor protein, it will not be more than seven, eight, maximum 10, right? So the influence of all this crowding on the major component of the cell water will be really high. To make this much more illustrative, I will show you uh, images taken with the STED microscopy where the only protein that in these cells, Eureka T cells that are labeled with fluorescence are acting, which is around 10% of the proteins in the system. Imagine when you start to add all the rest of the protein, solids and things like that. This is extremely crowded uh, environment. So the question I will pose here is to what extent we can use the uh, basis of, of, of ideal solution theory to you know, mimic what is happening in the intracellular environment. And, and the other thing I would just make a, an, an, an emphasis on that is that a, the major component of the cell, water, which is a very important actor in my talk today, can really be assumed to act merely as a biological solvent. Water is basically not considered at all when we are talking about processes. I think that you will agree with me with that. So, Well, <clears throat> another thing I want to point it out here is a, a, Generally, uh, what happens when deviations are observed from, from these uh, dilution theories? And well, what is happening essentially, you will incorporate in the equation correction factors, but you will not change the interpretative basis. Why? Well, because we are taught on one model and that's it. We don't have another option, right? There are many examples on that. For instance, uh, you have osmosis. Where, where you start to add the virial coefficients, where you start to have deviation from this behavior, right? The, the, from, from the osmosis in, in, in the loop situations. Diffusion, for instance, you will talk, uh, uh, generally talking uh, of diffusion in a cell as anomalous diffusion, which means essentially that the diffusion model is not applied, so you need to correct it. Also, when you talk about permeability, then you start to pop the postulate the existence of pump transporters and, and stuff like that. This is a model, right? Uh, so the question I will pose here is that if there are alternative and refute, of course, views that can incorporate all these features I was mentioning to you before and can describe a cellular function. And when you ask this question, the answer is yes. There is another view of the cell, which I will emphasize, we are not taught at all in the universities, right? And this is based essentially on principles from colloidal, sorry, colloidal physical chemistry and statistical mechanics. Um, the, the interesting thing is that if you go to the history, something that sometimes we are leaving on a side too, and I think it's very interesting just to teach the history of science, uh, you will realize that it is contemporary this protoplasmic doctrine with the membrane theory or the canonical model we are just teaching right now, right? They develop together. Basically, this view, uh, instead to focus in the membrane, it will focus in the cytosol. It will focus in the colloid that you have, that is the cell, right? The cell is as a colloid, essentially. And there you will just uh, talk about the concept of colloidal water, which is it's a contribution of Graham, that is the guy that invented dialysis in the 1920th uh, century, right? Um, and of course, you will privilege uh, the emergent properties of the system. Uh, this uh, view also emphasizes uh, very much partitioning rather than permeability of ions and solids, right? And in, in what they said essentially is that these ions or solids will accommodate uh, in, in a sort of adsorption sites that you have inside the cell, mostly polyelectrolyte like the intracellular proteins, okay? 
uh, all, all, all these ele ele electronic interactions that you have among the major components of the cells are, are, are the, 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 the most important in this video. Uh, obviously, it takes into account the crowded and the confined nature of the cell, uh, the intracellular environment. And he's talking about coherence in the system. So you will explain uh, cellular functions as transitions uh, uh, from two different low entropy states, which is not what we use in dilute solutions, right? Uh, and, and essentially what you are assuming there from a thermodynamical point of view that you don't have sensitivity to random thermal collisions. It's a different thing, right? Um, and, and the most complete quantitative version of the theory is uh, introduced in 1962, a little bit later. Uh, and this is maybe the reason why it's not really teach because the other model has been really popular by Gilbert Lin and is known as a, the association induction hypothesis. Okay, I will just try to, to, to give you generalities about this uh, association induction hypothesis and, and, and some conceptual points just to make clear what we are trying to test, right, when we are using this sort of view. Uh, just before that, I would just simply make another statement is that uh, in this particular theory, you will think uh, the cell not as a bag of water contained by a membrane, but as a gel, essentially, okay? Well, <clears throat> as I said, the quantitative version that arrived in the 60s, uh, it was introduced by Gilbert Ling. This is the, the book. Uh, can, can you see the arrow, uh, if I move the arrow? Yes, we can. Thank you. Uh, it's called A Physical Theory of the Living State, and this book has all the uh, statistical mechanics development of, of the ideas and things like that, if you're interested to, to, to read it. Um, if you want to go to a more uh, summer book with the concepts of the things, I will recommend that you can uh, read this called Life at the Cell Below, and at the Cell, sorry, and Below Cell Level. Uh, which is actually uh, online, so you can uh, download it that if you want, or alternatively, if you are interested, you can send me an email and I will send you all these books, uh, no problem. What are the general features of the theory? Well, uh, the, the, the very important thing that this is a quantitative te theory. So you have a, a, a quantitative theoretical framework based on this principle of, of statistical mechanics and, and, and colloidal physical chemistry, as I said before. The other thing is that we'll incorporate the, the, these this, uh, features, which are kind of ignored, although they are acknowledged, but the theories that you apply in the canonical model are keeping being the theories of, of dilute solutions, uh, acknowledging, and, and, uh, I mean, crowding and confinement in the cell. Um, there is a very extensive piece of, of, of or body of experimental evidence, evidence and it's, 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 it's possible to use the theory to explain something because the focus on the single molecules events are, is, is kind of ignored, you know, generally. That is a, a coupling, right, between physics, chemistry, and physiology in these systems, right? Particularly emphasizing the emerging properties. Um, the, the other very interesting thing that you have with this theory is that uh, uh, it defined the living state and, and they consider the living state instead to a, 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 of the cell, right? Instead of a, a, a steady state uh, energetics as a metastable equilibrium between two states. One is a resting state, another is an active state, which both has low entropy that requires relatively small energy inputs to uh, maintain the dynamic, the, the dynamic properties of, of, of the cell, right? Uh, if you think about, uh, we, we have a, a mutually exclusive, you know, theories, uh, the, because the concepts that, that you use are, are different. Um, uh, this is also very well known, otherwise, uh, uh, you know, I, I always tested that with my students, uh, I'm, I'm asking them uh, how, how is, <laughs> or, or what is the percentage of lipids in a cell? And they came with, with, with answers of uh, around 20, 30, 50%, because there's so much emphasis in, in the lipids in this other model that they simply lose 
the, 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 the information. Lipids are a minority compared with water proteins and ions, for example. It's not more than 0.1% of the total molecules that you have in the cells, right? And, and, and so this theory will, will, will essentially assume that water proteins, ions, and solutes are electronically associated. I will interact among them, right? Uh, as a sort of a coherent uh, integrated system. And, and uh, something that is very interesting with this theory is that this uh, sort of uh, amalgam, right? Uh, amalgamated uh, water protein monovalent ions and solutes that you have in the cell will be regulated uh, by uh, the metabolism of the cell. Particularly ATP, hormones, calcium, all these, these very important components in cell are able, depending on the level they are, to regulate the physical properties of the system, right? So the chemistry is coupled with the physics and then these two things together are coupled with the physiology, which are regulating the, the, the functioning of the cell. If you go to the uh, very detailed part of that, and I'm, I'm using really a large part of, of the time in, in this, but I want to make it clear for, because I'm pretty sure that this is probably the very first time that you hear about these things, is that uh, from, con from, from the, uh, a conceptual point of view, the, the, there are two main parts in this, in this uh, theory. One is, is related to the uh, behavior of the uh, ions or the ionizable species in crowded environments. In, in situations where the ionic strength is so high that basically you cannot apply the Weyhugel approximations, right? So you cannot really talk about dissociation of ions in a situation of crowding like this. The other part, which is very interesting, is, is a theory of proteins, right? Which is mostly emphasize uh, uh, proteins as polyelectrolytes and partially resonating polymers. Essentially, you know, the, 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 when I'm saying partially resonating polymers, I'm, I'm, I'm referring to the peptide bond or to the amide bond that we, we all know that this is a resonating right bond. So then you can propagate electronic uh, uh, signals through, right? Uh, well, as, as the name, association induction hypothesis, the association part uh, is, is doing a very deep analysis on this ionic association, particularly from the standpoint of Bierum concept. This is a, a Bierum, work in 1926, this is physical chemistry, right? Which is considering non-dissociate ionic fraction, right? This is well known and it's very well proved. It's salts, you can do that, right? What this uh, analysis demonstrate that when you have a fixed charge system, right? Like for example, this, the ones you have in an ion chain resins, which is more or less how he proposed that the interior of the cell work concerning the ionic, you know, exchange, uh, but also extended to proteins. The, the activity of, of, of counter ions that you have will be very uh, reduced uh, compared with the dilute solutions. Essentially what is proven there for entropic factors is that when you have this very, very high crowding environment and the charges are fixed in the space, you know, the ions are not really, or, or, or the pair ion, fixed ion, contra, contra ion are, will not be dissociated, right? So will be associated. Well, when you have a situation like that, like in the ion exchange resins, where you do have counter ion association, uh, what is privileging there is the energetics of, of short range interactions, right? Instead of the long range interactions. And when you have a situation like that, you will have an, an, a property that will emerge from that, which is selectivity for the counter ions. You have all the statistical mechanics, uh, you know, demonstration in this book of 1962 about these things. And well, when you have ionic selectivity, right? The variation of this electric density on this fixed uh, ionic site will be affected by the neighboring chemical groups, right? through induction effect. When I'm talking about induction, I'm going to the basic chemistry 
And then you can ask yourself why, for example, acetic acid is more uh, uh, weak than three chloroacetic acid is because you, well, in, in the three chloroacetic acid that you have the chloride that will, you know, drag the electron uh, cloud to the chlorine atoms. And then of course the proton will be free, right? Uh, easy, <laughs> easier, sorry, in the three chloroacetic acid than in, in the acetic acid. So all these inductive effects are taking really an important part in this. And then what is very interesting on in that in these systems where you have fixed charges, right? He defined a quantitative measure of, of the energy of association, right? And then by regulating this energy of, uh, you, you know, the, the, the nature, the polarization of the ions, uh, the fixed ions that you have there, then you can regulate which ion will be, uh, you know, adsorbed or, 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 or not, okay? Well, all this uh, analysis that he did, uh, or had, he did in, in, in this book on the 60s, which is quite, quite interesting and quite straightforward because it's totally based in, in, in physical chemistry uh, that all we understand, uh, will be extended this, this concept of ionic association to proteins, okay? And uh, uh, well, what he will assume is that the protein in crowd uh, environments like the cytosol, they must exist in, in associated states, either with uh, other charges in the protein, you know, when you have these salt bridges, for example, or salt linkage, or to the counter ions. The interesting things, right, is that um, this, this uh, uh, sort of, of characteristics that you have there, it will uh, due to, to, to situations where you will have exchange of ions instead of dissociation of ions as you use these concepts you use in the, in the membrane theory, okay? And, and this exchange of ions and selectivity that you have there will involve essentially energy flows, right? That will locally, you know, travel through uh, the resonant polypeptide backbone of the proteins and of course, it will affect the conformation of the protein, the ability of the protein to establish hydrogen bonds with water, or, or even the interactions between the proteins. This is quite interesting. And of course, I'm, I'm, I'm really giving you this in a, in a, in a, in a very fast way, but, but I, I really think that this is something interesting to, to read. Well, uh, then the association and induction, uh, phenomena that you have between the proteins, the water, the ions, and all these sort of things that, uh, as I said, and this is a very important thing, are originated in the short range interaction, will result in a, in a long range transfer of information and energy via conformational changes. For instance, you can have a transition of a protein from a alpha helix to a coil, for instance, or, or a subunit dissociation. Uh, making uh, the, 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 the crowded system, the intracellular envir uh, environment to be able to respond to uh, very fast, right? And co in, in a coherent way at, at length scales that will comprise essentially the wall cell. Okay, this is a very interesting thing. Um, obviously, the, um, uh, this, this theory will assign a really great, a great importance to what is called the random coil conformations in, in, or extended conformations in the proteins, right? It can be fiber conformations, can be random coil, um, basically because you can expose the electronic groups, meaning, you know, the carboxyl, the amino groups in, 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 in the amino acids, and also the amide bond to the media, right? And, and, and then you will promote the interaction with the ions and, and water. In fact, there is a, 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 dif a difference in, in this theory with, between what is called extroverted systems, which are the proteins that are open conformations with the introverted proteins that are essentially globular proteins, okay? And for instance, the main actors in, in this sort of events are cytoskeleton proteins, for instance, like actin tubulin in the fibrillar form, or essentially, mm. uh, um, what you have like a, a intrinsically disordered proteins, okay? Uh, in, 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 in mass or, or, or in abundance, the uh, IDPs and the fibrillar proteins 
will, will conform a, a around 50% of the mass of the proteins that you have inside the cell. Well, uh, there is also a subsidiary theory on this, on this model, uh, and I will just simply mention, but it, this is an important thing, which describe that this, uh, the ability of these fixed charge systems, these polyelectrolytes, having you know, negative, positive, negative, positive densities of charges uh, align in a, in, a, in a repetitive way to polarize water. And this is an, a very interesting thing because as, as soon as you polarize the water, you will change the chemical potential of the water in, uh, inside the cell. And when you change the chemical potential of water inside the cell, you start to you know, affect all what, what, what is the partition of solids on the cell. And, and, and obviously, you know, the, the, the dynamics of this major component into the intracellular environment. Just to finish with that, I will make the, the, the very last uh, point on this theory, which is, which is really important, is that uh, the inductive effect, which is, which is causing, right, of, of, of the, these short term interactions with ions and the propagation in the proteins can also be uh, uh, done by uh, uh, metabolites, right? And in fact, <clears throat> well, they call it uh, the metabolites, the cardinal adsorbents. And then, uh, for instance, uh, the ATP hormones or, or, or uh, divalent ions will cooperatively modulate via inductive effects to the um, uh, intracellular environment via these polarizing effects. Okay, so essentially, in in this context, then then you will have a responsive system because all these electronic inductions that you can regulate through the metabolites and also with, with the short range interaction through ions and, and, and interaction with water. Okay, so this is basically the, 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 the main aspects of the theory. Um, the, the theory, for example, dispute the idea of ATP as an energy donor, essentially it is interpreted uh, the, the role of ATP as an inductor, right? A chemical inductor. And also questioning is questioning the Michel theory, which is quite interesting to read. Those papers are, are really fun. Uh, and, and also uh, question the ATP as a high energy substance. I think that the most uh, 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 yeah, strong <laughs> experiment that this theory had uh, is the uh, energetic balance that they do when they trying to explain you know, the exchange from potassium to sodium in, a, in, a, in, a, in an electrical impulse, for example, uh, on, on the cell, right? And, and this is related to, uh, Lean criticized a lot the, the existence of the sodium potassium pump. But basically what he did is that just to do an, a very, very long experiment where, where he calculate the maximum amount of energy that you have in the cell, this is considering 100% of, of efficiency in the transfer, right? And considering the minus 12 kilocalories per mole uh, on the ATP, so consider the, the high energy phosphate. And when he compare with the energy you need to feed the sodium potassium pump in this uh, model of uh, you know, steady state energetics, it founds a deficiency of around 1,000 to 3,000%. Right. Essentially, well, he, he, he's saying that if you have a coherent system so that you really don't need to have some, such an energy in order to do the transfer. Remember, we are not talking here about pumps in the membrane passing the ions, simply is the adsorption sites on the cell interior because ions are permeable. This has been shown, you know, with, with, with radioactive experiments. Uh, and, and, and it can follow, for example, the the, the behavior of coherent systems, uh, uh, which are insensitive to the random thermal collisions. Okay, I think I just uh, destroy all the things that you have in your in your head <laughs> concerning the the, the theory um, and, and 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 meaning the membrane theory. Uh, I know that this is a very controversial thing, and and of course I know that you really need to digest and go and read if you are interested, of course. Uh, but, but the interesting thing uh, about this is that you can explain uh, the four paradigms of the cell physiology in a quantitative way with this view, meaning cell volume control, the selective ion distribution, the selective solid partition, and the cellular electrical potential in the same way that you can explain it with the other theory. 
And the other interesting thing is that this theory is not unrefined. It still remains, okay? Well, obviously, uh, I read this theory around 2007, and I have been, you know, very conflicted myself with this. And, 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 and I reached a point that I said, well, I really need to go and do some experiments. Uh, and then I choose an experimental system to try to, to, to play with the tenets of the as association induction hypothesis. And this is what I'm going to shortly show now uh, to the end of the talk. Well, what the, the, the system we, we choose is, is a, a, a oscillatory glycolysis in the uh, living cells, uh, Saccharomyces cerevisiae. So they are yeast cells, right? This is a very, very, very well characterized and very well known uh, phenomenon. It uh, has been studied for more than 70 years up now. And, and essentially, what, what, what you do there, well, uh, the, the first things that you do that you have the population of, of yeast that you will synchronize, you know, metabolically, and, and the way you do that is by starving. And then what you would do is to add a compound that will block the respiratory change, right? It can be cyanide, it can be argon, for instance, and then feed it uh, uh, with the substrate so that you, you, will, you will give food glucose to the cells. And in, in if everything is synchronized there, and 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 and, and you know, uh, then you will see uh, the manifestation of these oscillations at, as changes in the uh, metabolites that are intervening in, in in the glycolysis. Particularly, I'm talking about an ADH and an ATP, right? Well, I show you the experiment. You know, an ADH is fluorescence in in the NADH form, but it's not fluorescent in NAD. And uh, here you can see that when you just add glucose and then you add the inhibitor, then you start to see that the uh, metabolites start to oscillate. The very same things happen with ATP. Um, these are properties of single cells that became macroscopic because you have a synchronized uh, um, metabolites, and in particular, it's acetaldehyde, the one that is synchronizing all the cell population. But it is really beautiful. You put these cells. Uh, for example, uh, in the microscope, and then you induce these oscillations, and then you can see the signal of an ADH or the sense of ATP going up and down, going up and down, or you can do it in a cubet if you want as well. Okay, um, now what is why is interesting this 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 system? Because something that is uh, generally ignored, but is reported in in during the glycolytic oscillations is that the oscillations in these metabolites are coupled with a very large number of the cell, uh, cellular properties, right? In this case, I'm, I'm showing you here heat flux, for example, electrical potential at pH, right? Uh, basically, you have an underlying coupling between the chemistry and the physical properties of, or physical chemical properties of, of the cell. This coupling suggests essentially that uh, um, the, 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 the glycolysis will influence the environment of the cell and also the, the environment of the cell will influence the, the glycolysis, right? There will be a bidirectional effect between these two things, right? These, these considerations are generally not incorporated in the models that will describe the, the, the glycolytic oscillations if you go through the literature, simply because you are basing these as, 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 as a in, you know, uh, isotropic system, and, and the only thing that matters there are the enzymes working. You know, there is no explanation why from those models you do have this coupling. So we think actually that the studying of this coupling, it, it, it can be addressed, you know, by using uh, the, the association induction hypothesis. Because this is what kept, we were having done in, in, in the last six years, more or less. Well, uh, so we use this system to interrogate the predictive power of the association induction hypothesis because all these features I've mentioned to you before. And, and we, I, I'm going to pose four predictions. Of course, I'm not going to show you or give you all the experimental results because I'm, I'm talking about four, five, probably six papers here. And I will just try to get from those papers those results that are more representative. Okay. And 
Well, one, prediction number one, it, it is connected to the water dynamics. So the question I will try to answer there is that the water is passive or not. The prediction number two is this effect of this extroverter systems, you know, polyelectrolyte like the fibular proteins on the oscillations, right? And the coupling between ATP and water dynamics, the ions, right? The potassium uh, from the point of view uh, of the association induction hypothesis, as I mentioned at, uh, in, at the beginning of the talk, uh, uh, it considered that there is no dissociation of ions. Ions are adsorbed in, in the cell. So we're trying to analyze that and the coupling with ATP. And finally, just try to do some sort of experiment from the thermodynamic perspective and trying to answer the question if that you do have a coherent system or not, and, and if dissipative uh, process are dominating or not, okay? Well, uh, uh, this is the first experiment we did. And, and of course you put the cells to oscillate. We have a tool in the lab. I have been working with those uh, fluorescent molecules for, for forever, essentially more than 25 years. I know them very well. And these are uh, uh, Lord, and maybe you hear about that, the prod and, and act. And the difference between these three molecules is of course uh, the, the hydrophobicity that you have. So by using these three molecules, um, you can sense uh, 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 the dynamics of water, which is essentially what these molecules are sensitive to, right? The rotation of water uh, inside the probe, which is going to tell you about the effects of polarization, rotational dynamics, right? And, and this is the experiment we did, and this is what we obtained. And, and this is really interesting because it, it indicates essentially that no matter what, what you are, Agdan is more a cytosolic type of probe and lower than is a membrane probe, you do have oscillations which are completely coupled to the pacing of or the chemistry of, of, of the glycolysis process. The other very interesting things that we observe here is that the, the, the uh, coupling uh, between ATP signal and, and these Dan probe signals are essentially in phase, right? Uh, Agdan is the cytosolic uh, water and, and, and ATP is, this, is obviously the activity of ATP are completely in phase uh, on each other. When you uh, basically uh, use inhibitors to, to uh, uh, affect the synthesis of ATP, uh, these, these oscillations are simply disappear, all of them, okay? Uh, the other thing we observe, which, which is very, very relevant for us, is that either using the metabolites or using the uh, uh, dam props in the cells, you will see that the, the signal that you obtain from, from the oscillations are scale invariant. And what does mean essentially? Well, that you can take a thousand cells, you can take six cells, you can take one cell, you can take a piece of a cell and you can take a pixel of, of your image and the uh, frequency will not change. And, and why I'm making an emphasis on this? Well, basically because uh, uh, being scale invariant, you are in front of an intensive property of the system. And intensive properties are really very interesting tools uh, in terms of to define states in, 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 in system, right? Intensive properties, uh, you, you, you pass probably one or two years in physical chemistry or in general chemistry talking about intensive properties all, all the time. And, and then when you go to the biology, this is really disappear. Well, what we conclude here, two things, right? There are uh, 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 temporal and spatial evidence that the interior of the cell will act as a medium exhibiting a very rapid and coherent coupling between an intensive property, which is the intracellular water dipolar relaxation that you measure with these probes and the metabolic process, right? Which show fluctuations in the ATP. This is very much uh, along the idea or, or one of the tenets, actually the association induction hypothesis. And the, the other thing is of course, it disputes the idea that the water inside the cell is passive. You really have a coupling now between a chemical process and water. This has been shown also in the, for example, values of Sabotinsky oscillating chemical reactions when you put, you know, you crowd the media. Uh, and, and, and well, now it's extended to, to this cellular system. So water is not a passive component. Uh, this conclusion support the prediction number one. 
The other thing we did is just to work on the cytoskeleton and what we observe, uh, and it is, I'm going to go quick because I don't have too much time, uh, is you add an inhibitor of the actin polymerization, and not only you will see a halt of the os oscillation, but also you will see changes in the, in the intracellular water dipolar relaxation with that, okay? So essentially, it, it means these experiments are telling us that uh, uh, although the glycolysis will occur in the cell cytosol without the participation of the cytoskeleton, when you insult the, the, the integrity of this very important cellular component, right, the cellular cytoskeleton, and it, you basically impair the oscillations, okay? And the other thing that is important is that this uh, disruption of the cytoskeleton will impact on the intracellular water dynamics, which is also one of the tenets on the, uh, of, of the association induction hypothesis, right? Um, the third thing we did was going to the ions. And the, for those experiments, we use uh, a fluorescent sensor, PDFI, which is sensitive to, to, to the potassium. And well, we proved that this sensor is essentially inserted in the cell cytosol. And what we observe is that you do have oscillations of the potassium as well. Something that was very interesting in this, in this type of experiments is that it is well known that the yeast has around 200 to 300 millimolar, that's the range depending on the, on the yeast that you pick, of potassium inside the cell. And the KD of this uh, probe for potassium is around 20 millimolar. So if you do have all the potassium uh, free, you know, dissociated inside the cell, you will not see any sort of, of, of oscillations on, on the probe because you will saturate the probe, right? So I I instead we observe, you know, oscillations on the potassium levels. This is indicating essentially that you do have a, you know, a fraction of, of potassium oscillating with uh, in in in, in uh, coupled with this metabolism, they, they have the same frequency of NADH of ATP. We did more experiments. Essentially, what we, we do we did was just to use uh, a mutant of the yeast that uh, has impaired the transporters of potassium. Uh, uh, from the vacuole to the interior of the cell and also in the plasma membranes. And what we determine with this is that the fluctuations that we do have uh, on the potassiums are not fluxes coming from outside or from inside the cell. Uh, it's an alternation between adsorbed and dissociated states. And, and doing the calculations, uh, obviously, with, with, with the intensity of the signals, just having the dissociation constant of the probe inside the cell, we estimate that the uh, fraction of potassium that is oscillating in this uh, during the glycolytic oscillations is not, not more than 10% of what you do have in, inside the cell, which of course is in line with the association induction hypothesis as well. So you have most of the ions uh, inside the cell are adsorbed. The other thing we did is just to deplete the cell from ATP, and we observed also the prediction of the association induction hypothesis that said that when you deplete the cell of ATP, this cardinal adsorbents will not, you know, interfere anymore in modulating, right, electronically the, the, the state of the cytosol. I mean, essentially polarizing the water and adsorbing ions. And uh, when this happens, for instance, you have an increase in the amount of potassium that it is moved out, right? Because you don't have any more the cardinal adsorbent acting in the system, right? Uh, the same thing happens when you use latrunculin B, which is also the, the depolymerization of the fibrillar proteins, uh, also will lead to an augment of the concentration of potassium, right? Well, this is the, conclu the, the conclusion, sorry, number three. Uh, and, and there, what you will state essentially that also the, the one of the main components of the cell, potassium, will oscillate and will be coupled with the metabolic oscillation. It's essentially coupled with the ATP, right? And, 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 and in order to do these oscillations that's happened with water, you will need to have relevant levels of ATP and the organization of the cell cytoskeleton. And obviously, most of the 
potassium is adsorbed in the intracellular em environment, which support the prediction number three. And, and, the, and the last experiment we did for testing these sort of things is to measure oscillations in uh, thermodynamic variables. In particular, we were interested in temperature, and I will tell you in a minute why. What you see here is that this, this, the, the yeast are uh, in, 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 you know, starved. Then you add the cyanide, then you add the glucose. Then you start to see that the temperature start to rise. These are indications of dissipation. But then you have this region where we know essentially that you do have the oscillations where you can measure temperature oscillations. We also measure the heat flux, right? On that, and we can estimate that the, 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 there are correspondences between the heat and the temperature oscillations that you have in the system. And we compare that with the oscillation of the metabolites. And we see that they are completely having, uh, they're a couple. They have the same period and they have the same frequency, right? Well, what, why this is important? Well, there is a, a theory, and, and I will not go into detail, simply it just uh, refer to the paper down here if you're interested to read that. But this is has developed by Thomas Hamber, and he suggests that in, in, in any non-equilibrium process as the one we have there, there are a dissipative one, one dissipative component that is in line with the Onsager reciprocal relations or dissipation, but also there is an oscillatory component that will not produce entropy, right? And this is, uh, uh, Thomas in a very elegant way demonstrate that uh, when you have oscillation of a spring or an electrical circuit, so you can just do the thermodynamics on that and also that's involve chemical oscillations, right? And this is applied particularly where you have a, a systems that motion are not dominated by the random thermal collisions. So you have a coherent system and, and inertia can be neglected. And this is our more or less the, the, the features that you have in the intracellular environment because the crowding and the confinement. What this uh, theory predicts is that uh, you will expect a coupling between all the thermodynamic forces and the extensive properties of the system follow or accompanied by oscillations in the temperature. Essentially, the oscillations in the temperature are a fingerprint of presence of a process that do not produce entropy. So they are isentropic process. What I'm telling to you here is that you do have some sort of quasi-adiabatic situation in the system, right? So when you have a quasi-adiabatic situation in the system, you preserve the energy the, inside the system and you will not need uh, a, a, an enormous amount of energy for the system to produce. It's essentially challenging this uh, concept of um, uh, steady state energetics, okay? Well, the conclusions are, are, are uh, well, the confirmation of the existence of isentropic processes during this glycolytic oscillation. That has been postulated for, nerve, uh, for, for the nerve impulse in the cells. Actually, it's in the paper of Hodgkin and Houston that they see that there are heat that is released, but heat is absorbed during the, 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 the traveling of the electrical signal. Uh, but, but generally, you will not use uh, or you will not model a biological process as, 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 as isentropic processes. Essentially, you will just go for, for uh, a dominance of dissipative process there. Well, this... Uh, 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 Things we confirmed during the glycolytic oscillations with all the, the, the previous observations I showed to you will support the view uh, uh, of the intracellular environment as a very highly coherent and order uh, you know, system uh, with properties that can be related to a responsive gel, right? Um, which, which will not need too much energy to, to, to become active. All right, and, and in that sense, if you consider water not as a passive medium as we do in the other model, but as an active component or an active participant of the system, then well, uh, it has a very high <laughs> calorific capacity, and then you can store the energy in the system, and and then you will you will have some sort of of, of, of you know coupling between uh, the different aspects as, as suggested in this in this form. So it support the prediction form. Well, so now, now we are confident with, with the model and we are still working on that. But something that, that really took my attention of all these results is about the membranes. And as I show it to you, 
way back is that when you use lordan in the membrane, uh, you can see that also the membrane oscillate when you have a, a, an active chemical uh, uh, process, right? Uh, oscillations in this case in the glycol. So the question is how we can, you know, interpret these sort of things. What what these things are telling us? Well, we work uh, as well, and this is another paper. You know, I, I have been adding all these papers, and I will be more than happy to leave this uh, PowerPoint presentation to you guys if you want to 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 use it or or to to take papers and, and things like that from from here. Uh, what we did in this paper was just to generate a model, which is based obviously in the tenets of this association induction hypothesis. Essentially, we combine a kinetic model, right, with uh, the young Lin isotherm adsorption, uh, sorry, adsorption isotherm, which is uh, totally based on the association induction hypothesis. And we were able to reproduce this coupling that we have with the polarization of water and ATP, right? with our model. Also, this model was actually quite useful to reproduce uh, the kinetics of enzymes in crowding environments. You can see here in the B uh, figure that uh, the, the red curve is the Mike Michaelis Menten uh, fitting, and this is the fitting of our model. So we can describe much, much, much better the kinetics of enzymes in crowded media, considering the effect of the polarization of water mediated by these intracellular proteins, as, as I mentioned to you before. Well, it, the, the model also has an additional prediction, which we found that very interesting. It is, and, and it is the following. Our model will, will predict that if you do have a spatial, a coupling in the space and in time through polarized water in the cell, occurring from the place where you have the glycolytic oscillations to a place where they are not occurring the glycolytic oscillations that can be membranes, for example, you will be able to measure a shift. If, if, even though the frequency or the period of the oscillation will be the same, but you will be measuring a shift between the signal, the signal that you can measure in these two uh, uh, situations. And of course, we use this three fluorescent probes, and we add another one, which was Nile Red, that is used also for hydrophobic environments, that, uh, by the way, oscillate as, as well. Um, and, and, and then we can just test experimentally that. Essentially, when you do have a situation like that, you can use a phase plot, right? And uh, uh, then you can see if the system is in phase or out of phase, okay? And this is essentially what we did. Uh, so these are all the measurements we have in ADH here and ATP. These are the metabolites. This is Agdan, which is an hydrophilic probe. And this is Laurdan and Nile Red, which are the hydrophobic probe, right? It is clear that the frequency of the oscillations are cell-wide. But when you do this phase analysis, this plot, then you reproduce, essentially, this is uh, basically comparing the uh, oscillation of Nile red with the those of the dam probe because you, you have those in different environments, you can reproduce essentially what is going on here. So the two hydrophobic, Nile red and Lordan, are more or less in phase. Meanwhile, you start to add prodan, which is half and half, then they, they start to decouple, and when you use the actin, uh, it's totally out of phase. So this is confirming the prediction of our model. Now, the question is how are we gonna interpret this, this, this data? And, and, and I was uh, actually very, very, very excited uh, uh, with this um, because I think that what is going on there is a coupling between the dynamics of the cytosolic water with the water that is associated with the polar head group of, of, of the lipids in, 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 the, in the membranes, right? So, uh, Essentially, what is telling you this is that uh, uh, you can transmit, right, the, the, the polarized state of water from one side of the cell to another one, which is quite exciting. Why? Well, because when you change the polarization dynamically from one side to the other, what you will influence is the chemical potential of water. So when you influence water chemical potential uh, and you are thinking about lipids, then you are leading to lyotropic effects, right? And, and, and the beautiful 
thing of that is that this can be mediated by metabolic changes. So essentially, what does mean? Well, uh, the, that, that also membranes, right, can be actively responding to the metabolic state of the cell as, as, as a supramolecular, you know, entity via the polarization of intracellular water. And essentially what we came, this is a hypothesis, of course, and we are trying to model that in the lab. We have very uh, interesting, actually, results in vitro because it seems to be that this is really happening also in vitro, can be reproduced in the cells and in vitro. And, and this is the model of Lin, right? Where you have a uh, cardinal adsorbent polarizing the water, associating the ions. And now if you change the level of, of because a metabolic process, right? ATP, for example, then you will depolarize the water, then you will induce some sort of salt linkage in the proteins, and then you will free the ions. And these sort of things can be coupled to lyotropic organization in the lipids, meaning essentially that you can locally transform a lamellar phase to a hexagonal phase or a cubic phase, or eventually a micellar phase, whatever, right? And, and that can be another active part of that. This is really interesting and this working hypothesis is essentially uh, something new because the association hypothesis, because it, it was this, this sort of war that Lin has with the electrophysiology community, right? That, that essentially he neglected lipids. So the, there is in the original version of, of the association induction hypothesis, is, 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 is even neglected <laughs> that the lipids will do anything. And, and I don't think that this is the case because you do have lipids in the cells, right? So, well, just to finish up, what, is, what are the conclusions here? Uh, well, the first one is that uh, we found this association induction hypothesis to be a satisfactory, a, a, a satisfactory frame of theory to explain this mechanochemical coupling uh, occurring during, during an active metabolic process. Right, and, and, and of course supports the view that the cell interior is, is a colloidal system and not a, a bag of water, right? It, 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 in fact, water has a very, very, very important role in, 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 in this model, okay? The major component of the cell. The other thing is that, the, well, this intracellular medium uh, is capable to establish a very coherent and fast response uh, when you change the, the metabolic state uh, on length scale that will comprise the, the wall cell. So essentially you really don't need diffusion models uh, to explain. I mean, of course, I, I'm not saying that diffusion does not happen in the cell. I'm, I'm saying that you have another option to explain, you know, uh, the transmission. Sometimes the, the, the um, uh, time uh, frame of a, a cell activity is much, much shorter if, if you consider a protein move from point A to point B in a cell because of the crowding that you have. So then it's going to offer you another view and another tool to describe these sort of things. The other thing is that, uh, uh, well, we're trying to incorporate lipid membranes into this view. And the, the, as I said, the data explicitly dismissed in the original version, Ling was not a friend of, 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 of lipids. And, and basically, we, what our working hypothesis right now is uh, 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 that, that these membranes will be uh, sensitive, will be re responsive to uh, changes in, in, in the metabolic activity of the cell through the polarization of water. You know, you essentially, you can change the activity of water in the cell by, uh, you know, all these sort of short range interactions, induction processes and things like that. You can do quantitative uh, experiments as well. And finally, I, I think, in, in, uh, you know, it has been an explosion about these uh, um, molecular condensates and the functions in the cell, you know, because suddenly people realize that you, you do have organelles in the cell or you have the formation of uh, compartments that do not have lipids. And, and, and I think uh, that <laughs> all this proposition, as, as this is a science paper of 2017, that ATP is a biological hydrotrope, right? They said, well, in top of being an energetic molecule, it's stabilizing <laughs> proteins. Well, it can be easily explained with link theory. None, none of these papers are quoting link. It's monumental work, more than 50, 60 years. 
uh, and I think that it can be very, very useful. And this is for those that probably are interested in this sort of phenomenon, then they can take a look at the theory that it, it may help. Well, the, just to finish, uh, these are the collaborators, uh, uh, Roberto Stock uh, from the University uh, of Mexico in Cuernavaca, Lars uh, Foley Olsen from the uh, University of Southern Denmark. Uh, Henrik was, uh, these are colleagues, collaborators, researchers, and Henrik has been a PhD, my last PhD student in Denmark that he, he make a, a, a big contribution on and many of the work I show. Thomas was a collaborator as well uh, into all the, all the thermodynamics of, of these systems. And, and Agustin uh, Mangero is an actual postdoc I have here in Argentina who is working right now in, in, in the artificial model systems to, to validate the hypothesis. And well, these are the funding uh, from CIT and uh, CONICET in Argentina and the Dennis Research Council for the previous papers. And uh, thank you very much for your attention. And, and I'm really happy and glad that you are hearing me. And, and I will be more than happy to answer all your questions and, and discuss more in that respect. Thank you. OK, thank you, Luis. But this, you know, here comes the one of the uh, weirdest mo moments of this uh, remote talk. So it's, uh, we, we don't have like room for applause, but I will applaud you anyway on behalf of everybody for such a nice talk, very provocative. And uh, well, whoever feels like, you know, turning on the, your camera, you can just, you know, uh, clap your hands live if you want. So now we have time for questions and uh, this will work uh, both ways. You can either write questions in the uh, Q&A tab or chat, or you can just, uh, uh, you know, Right there that you want to ask your question live and we will turn your mic on so that you can uh, uh, ask your questions all right so. Uh, we do have a, a comment from from uh, Professor Erna Shaimovitz Erna, you want to make your comment live. Actually, it's a request. And is he still there. No, he's not there anymore. But they're not said that. Uh, oh, yeah, he's there. Okay. Yeah, I'm here. Ahead, Please. Oh, oh Yolanda is also uh, there. Luis, Hi, uh, Luis, I, I, I will, I will speak in Spanish, but uh, yeah. it's okay. Luis, muchas, muchas, muchas gracias. Hace muchos años que yo no escuchaba una presentación tan exciting. ¿tá? Y yo te voy a explicar por qué. Yo, yo trabajo con micelas y ion binding y propiedades de interfaces hace más o menos 100 años. ¿okay? Y esencialmente todo lo que tú dijiste está, no por milagro, pero por coincidencia científica, de acuerdo con todos mis datos de uh, la importancia de los ions asociados a interfaces, uh, la diferencia brutal entre leyes que se aplican en solución diluida y la realidad, sea biológica o industrial, da lo mismo. Y lo último que quería decir, porque estoy medio emocionado, es decir, realmente fantástico, que hace muy poco tiempo publicamos un trabajo analizando cómo los iones hidro, hidrotrópicos se asocian a interfaces. Y estoy totalmente de acuerdo también. No, solo me falta darte un beso porque estoy muy, muy emocionado. Uh, uh, estamos totalmente de acuerdo que llamar a ATP de compuestos ricos en energía me pone nervioso desde que yo era chiquitito, ¿ya? Pero ahora uh, es muy claro que como hydrotropic ion, it has a major, major effect, not only in binding, but also in ion exchange at the surface. And the effect of that ion exchange on the water that is, actually we have just published a couple of, a year ago, the uh, a, a very nice description of the structure 
of water in a micellar interface and how insensitive the structure of water that is hydrating the interface is to the nature of the ion that is beside it. But that doesn't count when you go outside. So, so thank you very, very much because perhaps I'm, I can say in practice what I've been saying in theory for many, many years and it coincides exactly what we use. So thank you again, that's it. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm really appreciate uh, your comments. And uh, well, now you know uh, a theory uh, uh, behind these things. Uh, the, I, I will recommend to read the 1962 book, book of Ling. Uh, it's, it's absolutely brilliant. And, 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 and it's particularly for, for, for me in, in my personal, uh, you know, uh, uh, Formation as as as, as a, in, in in my in my graduate times as a physical chemist, it it, it it was so 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 easy because you know right now I am I am working in a in a neurobiology institute where I became recently the director, and 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 I have really big 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 problems in order to follow uh, because physical chemistry is essentially out of the picture. Uh, you 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 will describe that a, a mouse start to laugh because two proteins are touching each other, and and you don't have any sort of of of, of you know uh, consideration on 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 the nature of the, the interactions, right? And and this idea of the electronic interaction from the major components of the cells are, in my opinion, very 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 excited. Uh, and, and well, of course, this is what I, I'm trying to direct my, my efforts right now. But I, I will highly recommend if you, well, if, if in general, you guys don't want to go to the deep, uh, you know, and heavy uh, description of all the theory of links, just try to read this book of 2001, because for a summer uh, vacation is inside the house now, <laughs> or in the yard because of this pandemic, but that, that will be a, a beautiful read and, and, and because it really make you think and about a lot, of, a lot of things. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Hernan. Uh, uh, any other comments or questions? You could just uh, write in the chat and uh, Leandro, could, could you please help me? Uh, um, and I on the, uh, on the uh, mic. Sure, so, sure. Ho, yeah, go ahead, Ho. Those yes, I have a question. Hi, Luis. Wonderful. Hey. Thank you very much. Doing, really wonderful all, uh, to see all the evolution as well. It's, it's quite nice. Uh, Luis, when you're talking about this changing in membrane curvature that you can induce through the, the metabolism in water, and could you think that we could induce some membrane fission? Absolutely. Absolutely. You yeah. can go in this direction? Absolutely. You, you know, for instance, uh, uh, there is a, a, an organ uh, inside the cell, the endoplasmatic reticulum, and you know, all these sort of very curved organelles, which when you see how the dynamic of this system really is produced, right? The, the, the curvature there is so important and it's so, so, so dynamic uh, that that well, when, when you start to think now in, in water activity, in a composition of lipids that, 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 that you can tune, then you can have transitions to non-laminar phases easily, you know. This is, this is one of the big things concerning, uh, you know, the cell, because if you take the lipids from the cells, right, and then you do the, 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 the uh, thermotropic behavior or, 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 or the, the structure behavior of these lipids, most of them are, are lipids that will promote the terminal phases. What the classical view is saying to you, well, the proteins there will establish this to be a laminar structure. But, but, but why? If, if you have the option, right, to change the chemical activity of water inside the cell through a metabolic pathway, why you will not allow the other uh, structures to come into place? 
this is this is a, is, is another beautiful feature of a tool that you have there, right? The supramolecular structure that can be responsive as well, right? So uh, uh, yes, I, I absolutely uh, uh, will 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 say yes. This is this is what what I'm thinking right now. In fact, we are doing studies now where we are testing, you know, these sort of transitions as well. When you start to play with the with the chemical activity, and and, and we have some results that, that in principle will sort of confirm, you know, something like that going on. Yeah. Thank you, Luis. Any other, any other questions, comments? You now can. Well, you you all now have your mics uh, on. I mean, you are allowed to uh, turn your mics on, so you just feel free to turn on your mic and ask questions. Can I just ask you something, Luis? Well, I, I I do have a comment to add. Oh, uh, just in the same context of the uh, ER you just mentioned. Have you uh, heard that uh, there is this, uh, 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 you know, a proposal from Jim Rothman, the uh, Nobel laureate in uh, medicine and physiology, who happens to be a physicist actually? So he, ju he just published this paper in Fab Fab's journal end of last year, saying that well, he it might well be that the Golgi apparatus is actually a, a membrane-less organelle, resulting from the liquid-liquid phase separation of the uh, organelle. And we here in Hibernum Perth are showing that, you know, a family of uh, Golgi proteins called grasps, they can indeed do that. They can, you know, form fibers in vivo and they can also, you know, undergo liquid liquid phase separation. So there's this whole new, you know, thing coming up from Jim Rothman uh, saying that, well, look, it might well be that the, the Golgi, you know, you don't need membrane is there it's just a you know face you know liquid immiscibility let, let 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 me add something which which i do agree with that but the problem in my opinion there is that you are thinking that the membrane will act as a container of the organelle and i don't think that really matters if you have lipids or not <laughs> you can have lipids Right, but doesn't mean that the lipids are forming, you know, a barrier and the, the, the you know, hydrophobic slab, which will allow the permeability. No, I mean, the lip. I mean, we know that very well. I mean, uh, the, the the properties of, of a membrane when you approach a, a phase transition. So this is all these ideas of the phase transitions, right? We right. have been studying phase transitions in lipids forever, and now. We are having phase transitions uh, in polymers, and we are using that just to describe this liquid-liquid immiscibility. But the, right. my, in my opinion, the major problem you have there is the, uh, the fluid mosaic model and the compartmentalization role of the lipid in the uh, idea of the behavior of a cell. Uh, you, you know, I'm, I'm trying to think about dynamics, and what I can see is that the dynamics of the DNA or, or the nucleotides, the dynamics of the proteins, the dynamics of the sugars, the dynamics of the lipids are completely different from each other. And that is the beauty of the thing. So you start to combine these sort of things in order to make the, the system extremely responsive and, and have the capacity to respond with, with, with all these time scales, right? But I, I, I think that the, the, the main problem in my opinion is the way we teach. And we, what we are saying there is that the lipids are the ones dividing the cell. I, I, yesterday I gave a class, you know, in a course in, 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 in the university. And I was asking, I mentioned that in the talk. I was asking the kids, well, how, 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 how much lipids do you have in a cell? And these guys were coming with 50% of the cells are lipids. And why is that? Because the emphasis on, on the membrane, the centrality of the membrane. And I think that it's, it's not fair that we are giving only one view because this is a danger of things. You, you, you simply will indoctrinate all the people. And, right. and that is why it's so difficult, yet, you know, when you try to present a topic like that, it's just to adjust the things in, in one hour because you really need to explain all the, 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 uh, the, the other theory because people don't know. Absolutely don't know anything about that. Right. There's a comment here in the uh, Zoom uh, from Iman. Iman, you wanna you wanna uh, ask you know say your comment live or it's just is 
it's just written there. Lipids are introduced with which proportions? Uh, okay. by... Let me give you an example. Uh, I know that this is not a, a common cell, but uh, Lean is, is, is uh, this book of, of Ling, uh, uh, there is actually one from 1984, which is very beautiful because he has like three, four chapters where he go all this with, with, with all the story where they, the, the ideas are coming from and what are the experiments, right? Uh, for example, there I learned that the active proteins are all, all, always has more charged amino acids than the ones that don't, right? That they are the structural proteins, for example, things like that. And, and, and Ling is, is, is doing a, 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 an example with the red blood cell, which also translate to other cells. And I know that the red blood cell don't have nucleus and things like that, but just to give you an idea, Ling in, in the red blood cells, you have 64% of the cell in mass is water. From the 36% remaining, right, 99% is hemoglobin. From the 1% remaining of that, right, uh, I think it's 0.1 or 0.2% are lipids because you need to consider the other proteins, salts, and, 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 and yeah, sugars, whatever, okay. That, that is giving you an idea about the uh, major components of the cell. And, the mayor, and that is the reason why this guy is, is, is going through that because he said, well, there is electronic interactions in the main components. Of course, the others will be slaving somehow to that, but this is why Ling put a lot of emphasis in water, proteins, and ions, yeah? Water in, 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 in quantity and in mass is the major component. Um, proteins in mass are the second, but if you are in, 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 in numbers, is potassium the second, right? So, and, 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 and that is basically it. And they came with this, uh, you know, idea to conceptualize through the uh, ionic resins exchange, ionic exchange of resins. And, 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 and actually the treatment is, is actually beautiful. And, and he has the experiments, he has, <laughs> it's just to, right. to ho, ho, do you want to add something? You were about to say something and I think I was, you know, unpolite to- uh... It was about an ear and you have talked. Thank you. Okay. Well, uh, any other comments? Yes. Questions? Oh, Hernan has another comment. Go ahead, Hernan, please. Uh, Luis. Uh, agreeing with almost everything you said, I think you're exaggerating with the lipids because uh, you don't need too many lipid molecules to form a monolayer. You can cover a whole Ooh. lake with a couple of milligrams of, of, of lipid. Ooh. So the point is not that you have few molecules of lipid, but the point is that we have been accustomed to think of the mosaic model uh, without realizing that if you take any membrane, proteins are more abundant than lipids, so you have no way to have a continuous bilayer uh, all over the place. But uh, let's be a bit more careful because you don't need too many molecules. That is not the point. Fine, I, I fully agree with you, but you know, I'm, I'm trying to make the emphasis on, 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 on that, right? Because, uh, you know, it's so central, the, 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 the function of a membrane as compartmentalizing things and stuff like that, because it can be integrated. Right, uh, I, I, I barely, you know, uh, believe that uh, in, in this cartoon of, of, of the, the, the Singer and Nicholson model where, where, where you have these proteins floating around. I think actually we, we were discussing that in Denmark way back that it can be the opposite actually that the proteins will be the mattress for the lipids, right? Because, because the, the, the extent and, 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 and you know, the quantity of proteins in the surface of a cell, uh, I mean, I, 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 if I imagine myself, I see uh, uh, patches, little patches of lipids 
with a lot of proteins surrounding there. This is my view. Uh, and I think that this is related to this story of the quantity, but I do agree with you that you need in order to do a monolayer, and this is what was, was, was we're doing in Babylon, right? Just to count the, the waters in the harbor, just to pour some oil and everything was flat. <laughs> yes, I do agree with that. Yeah, any other comments, questions? Uh, I, I, well, I have a question, but uh, we already, it's already 6.30, but well, how would, uh, how would we uh, uh, take into account the entropic contribution of water in protein folding within this uh, AIH uh, model. I mean, it seems that if water is there, it is not allowed to like move freely. Uh, most of the proteins would would tend would would prefer to be either intrinsically disordered or something like that. I mean, how about the globular ones? Okay. Uh, well, you know, you you do have. Uh, two two uh, situations there in 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 Link's uh, formalism, uh, and and remember this is 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 a very important uh, uh, statement about the fixed charge systems. Okay, as 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 soon as you put a protein in in in, in a tube, <laughs> you are out of that condition, right? If you have a semi-fix a charge system or a dilute system, uh, the short range interactions that I have been talking about, they are not really working. They, they, they are not dominant. You do have the long range interactions, you know. Uh, right. and, 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 and there, for example, uh, it, it requires essentially that you do have on, on the surface of, uh, of the protein confronting the surface of, of another protein, because this is what is essentially happening in, 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 the, in the cytosol, right? Uh, and I think that, it, you know, from the point of view of characteri characterization of the enzymes and the structure of the proteins, uh, well, I don't know if that is really done, you know? Uh, uh, go go to 250 milligrams per milliliter and see what is going on there, and 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 yes, but but from the from the entropic point of view, and actually this is the argument that Link is using for the ions. Right. When you do have this enormous crowding and confinement in there, you know, it, it, there is no chance of, of the pair to be dissociated there. And also for the water, the, the water will be, you know, stuck right. on the surface and, and, and be polarized by, by the, because the beauty of the proteins, uh, and this is the, the, the subsidiary theory that he pointed out, which is also brilliant. And actually they make the predictions and they did the experiments too, uh, that when, when, when you put a, a system a charge system, and he used a uh, silver chloride actually that has a distance very similar to the peptide bonds, right? And then you you put these systems uh, at ten microns different, two plaques, right? Of of uh, silver chloride, two crystals of silver chloride at ten micrometer distance, and you put water there. You don't freeze that water, and you don't boil that water. All right, ten microns, ten microns. Right. Okay, so uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, that that is also leading to all this work of of Gerard Pollack that they use the exclusion zones that happens in the surface of a cell or polymers like nafion and things like that, and you see that those systems are in uh, you know links classify that in NP NP or NO NO or a. Uh, yeah, PO, PO. So all, all, all the, the theories there. Yeah. Okay. All right. No, thank you, Luis. Uh, 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 with that, I think we can wrap this up. I just want to remind you all that this uh, uh, talk was recorded and the video will be available on the uh, SBBF YouTube, YouTube channel. So the Brazilian Biophysical Society is now in all the uh, social medias due to our, the good work of Leandro, our scientific director. So we have a, a YouTube channel and all the uh, webinars we've had so far and all the, the ones that are to come will be available on our YouTube channel. So just go to YouTube and then uh, search there for SBBF. 
Okay, and you will find all the all the videos there, including this talk. So uh, you know, with the videos, you can also like you know get the reference of the papers that Luis mentioned during his talk, and then trying to download the videos. Okay, so uh, we. Uh, 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 Bagatoli, there is a question in the uh, about they are not uh, 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 the the site is not working. So maybe you can send your email. For the students, well, you know, I, I have been uh, testing the site and I can open it. Uh, but but look, no no problem. Uh, I, I will put in the chat my email. Yes, you can just put your email there. And who wants yeah. to who wants to have the uh, the, the book? You can just send them. Yeah, exactly. And 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 uh, I will be more than than happy to share with you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, all the material I have, I have the books. I have some papers and if you want the papers from the group i i also just just send it to you no problem and 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 and, and whatever questions you have in that respect if you want to keep going with the discussion i would be more than happy in yeah well yeah. so we uh the schedule the program for the uh, next webinars are already is already available on our uh, uh website so just go to sbbf.org S.br, sbbf.org.br, and you will find there the program for the uh, seminars to come, okay? So our seminars are always on Wednesdays at 5 p.m. Brazilian time. So I would uh, re invite you now to just turn on your cameras so that we could take a picture of everybody there. This is the uh, modern way of, you know, Having like you know, uh, seen everybody, we can just wave and so do something like that. Oh, this is modernity, right? So please, Leandro, you do that or I do it. Yeah, yeah you so can do it. I'm doing here also. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, cheers! Yay! Yay! Oops. Okay, so with oh. that, we uh, thanks Luis Bagatoli again for this uh, wonderful talk very bold ideas, provocative ideas, and really good uh, scientific discussion. Thank you, Luis, so much for being Thank with you us. you, guys, and, and I'm, I'm so glad to see all uh, familiar friends' face, and I really hope at some point we can just drink some caipirinha. Yes, and I really miss the, uh, the beer we would have after the talk where you here, okay? Yes. <laughs> this is a, mes a message for... for, uh, for uh, um, Pietro, that that he he gave me this beautiful bottle of cachaça. Now it's Pietro, strong. Here. Pietro, oh, there, there he is. There, Pietro is there. Pietro. <laughs> I arrange another. No problem. <laughs> Thank you very much, and, and and greetings to everyone. Thank you, you are welcome for, for everything. Yeah. So okay, really so, you guys, so you guys take care. Wash your hands. Put on your mask. The pandemic's not over, not yet. So take care, okay? Take care. See you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Very good, man. Thank you so much. This thank was you. amazing. Thank this you, thank you. Amazing. So, and I, I would suggest you take a look at the uh, James Rothman, this paper in Fab's journal. I can send it to you. Please do that, please. Yeah, his idea is, you know, really, uh, you know, right into what he was saying about this uh, membrane-less organelles. Yeah. Yeah. Please. And also, Hernan, I would like just to, if you can send me those papers too, the, your, your papers. You're, you're, you're muted, Hernan. So, how should that look at, Professor? So, you are mute. No problem. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. It was very nice seeing you all. Bye bye. Likewise. Bye bye. Thank you. Ciao. Se cuida. Tô aqui também. Ô, Sebastião, tudo bom? Se cuida aí, velho. Obrigado por ter vindo. Tchau, tchau, pessoal. Tchau, tchau. tchau.